Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Kamiski, and welcome to the only visual novel tutorial you will ever need. This is part two. In part one, I introduce myself, your teacher, Jacob Kamiski, and what we kind of need before we go into programming a visual novel, the kind of mindset you need to have. And one of the things I went over is that we would need this program right here, Visual Novel Maker. So if you haven't seen episode one, please, please, please check that out. Cool, cool, awesome. So when you load up VN Maker for the first time, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna be completely blank. So I figured it'd be smart to take an episode, can walk you guys through the interface of VN Maker so that it's a bit easier to travel, people won't get as lost, or if they do get lost, they have a video to come back to to know what all the buttons mean, exactly where they need to go to get started programming, all that good stuff. And your first button you're going to want to pick right down here is New Project. You want to go with the scene base 1080p or 720p UI. You don't want to do a pre-built UI. That'll make your game kind of look like, you know, stock, generic, and it allows for less customizable options going down the line unless you, you know, know some JavaScript. So you want to go with the scene based. That's what I've used. That's what I'm going to teach you guys how to use. And after you do that, it's going to load up a custom game with some pre-built scenes, some pre-built character assets that you can use. But I've prepared something within my own game to show you guys kind of how Visual Novel Maker works. So this is going to be your main workstation right here. It's divided into five specific parts. You got most prominently, you got the live preview feature here. You got the scene content, which is where you're going to be putting your actual code. All these little multicolored bubbles right here, that's code. And the code is directly pulled from here in the commands list. Anything you can think of programming into a visual novel, it's right there in the commands. I am not joking. It is really that simple. And if you want to do something a bit more complicated, you can do that just by combining different different commands. It's really just as easy as dragging, dropping, filling in the bubbles with the information that you want, and going from there. Up here we got the scenes. The scenes are what compose your VN. You want to keep them small, helps with the processing power of your game, makes it easier for you to go back into your scenes and actually program it because it's a lot harder to find a bug when it's in a big old scene with a lot of code. So keep your scenes small. You're, the people playing your game will thank you. You'll thank you. You want a bunch of tiny scenes that are easy to manage to make up the bulk of your game. And last but not least, we got the options here. We got the save bubble, save frequently. I once had a hurricane hit while I was programming and I lost two hours worth of progress because my power went out and I wasn't saving. Don't be like me, save frequently. You got this little arrow right here, it takes you back to all your projects. This one is your main workstation. This little cylinder with the script next to it, these are going to be the actual settings for your VN. This is where if you want to make new characters, you can make new characters here. I made one called Freaky Joe a few seconds ago. You just right click, type whoever you want. Freaky Joe, boom. Freak data for Freaky Joe now exists. You can give them a custom color, default expressions, and then you can go into character expressions and you can add specific expressions for those characters. So for example, Andy. This is where you would like load in your character sprites and tie them to specific characters. It's really easy. You got your CG gallery. You can put all your CGs right in here. If you have like an unlock gallery, this is where you set that up. Animations. Most of the time, this is just going to be your message carrot. But if you want to do more advanced animations, uh, you can start messing around with that here. Common events, we're going to get into these later, but any unique code that you construct for your game where you're like, at this scene, I want this to happen while the rest of the script's happening, that's common events. Common events are the bulk of how we make buttons, how we make custom UI, 
and you want to keep that you don't want to be like me and have a million of them because the more common events you have the slower your game goes but it also makes your game deeper and more complex because you can add more features that require more user interactivity using common events and then you got a bunch of your system settings this is just the resolution your game is at you can mess around with these a little bit more but typically you just want to like keep them as whatever they appear as by default but if you want to mess with the system settings you can do that there these two this is mostly just code for visual novel maker itself for your game script unless you like hard core no java and want to mess around with the actual back end you're rarely ever going to be going here and here are some language profiles for if your game has different translations you can toggle which language profile your game is currently in and that way if you got like a language profile for Japanese all your text will appear in Japanese if you got a language profile for German it's all gonna appear in German you can load your assets into your game here or you can just drag and drop them into your games folder like just drag and drop them into like graphics or audio or what have you but if you want to custom import them to you can do that as well and this green button right here this is what you press to try your game out and test it as if somebody had just downloaded it so if you want to test how your game would actually play you can just hit that green play button and it'll start from whatever scene you have selected as your start scene or your intro scene all right all right so you can press that to actually play your game so those are the five core parts of your workstation but let's get into how all this stuff actually works together so typical workflow is going to be like this you load up visual novel maker you decide what scene you're programming in today let's say oh i'm jacob and i want to program judith's scene all right i'm going to click judith's scene the scene content if it's a blank scene, it's gonna appear blank, but because this is a finished game, there's a ton of code here. So, I'm in Judith's scene. And let's say I wanna just edit the text on this line. You know, good luck up there in Asheville, blah, blah, blah. And I wanna change that to an exclamation point. You do your actual programming here in the scene content. And then it's gonna show you it via the live preview. Sometimes you need to restart it especially with the longer more complex scenes which again is why i'm recommending keep your scene small because i didn't and that led to a lot of trouble for me for the people playing my game all that stuff so how this essentially works is you pick what scene you want you go to the actual code and boom as you can see it's now an exclamation point if i wanted to change that to a period I could do it like that boom it's now a period so all your programming you do it here in the scene content and then it shows up in the live preview in real time and if you want to add specific code to your scene you pull from the commands so now I can start like getting a little bit deeper into what the commands are I'm gonna save like the really in-depth stuff for future lessons but for right now I'll give you guys a general overview of the kinds of commands that you'll be using when you're actually programming your game all right so I made a custom scene here for part two of the tutorial conveniently called part two and I'm gonna walk you through what's happening in this scene step by step so I'm gonna say a bunch of terms that you guys might not know about but if you do awesome we're all on the same page so this text box that just appeared it's composed of a bunch of different buttons all these buttons have different hot spots have different common events tied to them but there's this one common event I program called show message box that when that appears causes that message box to rise on up all right then it goes to change background then Violet joins this scene and then shows a message in a little message area that I've set up right in that text box 
So four lines of code right here all do different things. And they all have different homes. So for common events, that's essentially custom code that you can call at any point in your game. And it'll do a specific action. So let's say you wanna have, you want it so that whenever a certain character appears on screen, it p plays like a fun sound effect and does an animation. You program that fun sound effect in that animation, and then you call that common event, you program call common event uh, entrance or whatever. And it, that common event happens in the code. And it'll keep happening until you tell it to stop happening. For changing background, it's exactly what it sounds like. Just change the background. You select whatever file you want the background to be. Let's say I want Violet to be in front of the cafeteria. Boom. You just go into your files by clicking this. Pick the exact PNG you want. And then adjust how long it takes for that fade in to actually happen. Let's say I want it to be one second instead of two seconds. You can also change the layer it's on as well. If you want multiple background layers. For the join scene, you just click join. First of all, I should probably tell you guys how to actually access these. So all of these little bubbles right here, they all live right here in the command section. So for example, the change background one, there's a section here. Commands, background. These give you a bunch of commands specifically for your game's backgrounds. Like this whole section, just devoted to the backgrounds. You can change the backgrounds, you can tint the background to a specific color. Let's say we want to make it sepia. Boom. Now it's got a nice sepia tone to it. What I, I could go over these like individually one by one, but I really feel like it's best to just load up a kind of like sandbox project, mess around with the different commands, have fun with it, see what you're capable of. But the long and short of it is if you can think of something that you want done in a VN, it lives right here in the command section. And like even something as simple as just like shaking the background. Like you can just shake the background for like two seconds. You can adjust the range at which it shakes too. change the speed to like 500 so you look at that earthquake so these commands this is where you do all the stuff for your game and I'm gonna get like more in depth as to what these commands do in the next episode but essentially just yeah mess around with it see see what they can do and remember that the workflow typically goes, you want to go and pick what scene you want to do. You want to go to your scene content and you want to start just like pulling from the commands and typing your stuff in. Alrighty, so that's a general overview of just the interface of Visual Novel Maker. I think you guys kind of get why I'm high on this program. It's really, really awesome just being able to see your code work in real time like this. That way, if there's any bugs that happen, or you really, really just are kind of like viewing this less like a programmer and more just like a screenwriter, you get to see exactly how the characters are with that background. You get to see what works, what doesn't work. Um, you kind of get a sense for how it's going to be instead of programming a bunch of stuff and not really being able to see it in your mind's eye. Now you can just kind of look and you immediately know, oh, I don't really like that outfit for Violet in this scene. Let's change it to her second outfit. Something along those lines. Much better. So you can kind of make those like on the fly decisions and see what happens in real time. And it's really, really handy. I know I was kind of in this episode a little like vague on what the commands do and like actually programming, but that's something that's going to that's something that warrants its own specific video. So we're going to get more into that in the next one. So yes, part three, it's going to be specifically the commands. I'm going to go over all these different commands because there's categories for basically anything that you can think of. Oh, you want to make 
You want to make the player wait five seconds? Yeah. Two seconds after Violet shows up before she starts talking to you? Boom. Wait command. Two seconds of awkward silence. Love it. I didn't program... Uh, I didn't change her sprite in that one, so she just immediately went from that to that. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, there's commands for just about anything that you can think of here, so I'm going to go more in depth in the next episode. But until then, guys, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.